JB. And what do you do for a living, JB? So I'm a social media influencer. Um, I'm on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram at JB Always Fresh. What's a day in the life of a influencer look like? It's fun. I, I have fun every day. I just do a lot of things. I meet a lot of people, and yeah. And how much do you make doing what you're doing? Six figures. Yeah, living good, eating good. Yeah, you're blessed. Yeah, I bless. <laughs> yeah. What qualities does someone need to have to make it as an influencer? Qualities, I'd say you definitely have to be good in front of the camera. Yeah, for sure. You gotta have good communication skills, be able to network and talk to people. Um, yeah, and just like, just you spread good vibes and positive energy to the people watching the video, right? Yeah. So. And what steps did you take? I know it's not a traditional career, but what steps did you take to get into being an influencer? I took the steps necessary to, to become an influencer and to become that person I am today. Honestly, it's like a, it's, it's a ladder. Anything that you want to do in life, you got to be passionate about it. If, if you love what you do, I promise you, you'll do 200% times better than anything else. Because pass, through passion, anything is possible. No, that's facts. And my last question for you is, what's your favorite thing about what you do? Uh, my favorite thing about what I do is meeting celebs, bro. Like, I meet like some really cool people. You know, I meet some really cool people. I roll around in these nice cars. Like, just life is good, man. <laughs> who's, who's, who's the celeb that you met that you were like, damn? I really made it. I don't know about damn I really made it cuz I'm still working to the top, right? I'm 18. Yeah. I'm still I'm so I'm still building my empire, but I met Drake. And when I did, you know, that gave me a lot of motivation and like to meet him again someday, you know, and, and maybe collab and make a video with him. Reem Salmi. And what do you do for a living? Um, what do I do for income or what do I do in terms of like the bulk of my life? What how are you making money right now? Okay. How I made the money I have is through trading crypto. Um, before that, I was a commercial real estate broker, um, but I invested all of that money into my music career. So I have a small record label that I push my music through. So how much were you making when you were doing commercial real estate and trading crypto? Um, commercial real estate, I was making over 200000 okay. Um And in crypto, I only wanted to make enough to focus on my music. So when I was trading... I was making over a hundred thousand and then I was able to focus on music. So now you're in your you're doing your record label full time? So yes and no. I did business development for a crypto conference because I'm not interested in trading anymore. I like doing this, like seeing people. And I think there's an opportunity in that to be the person that connects businesses and you get a percentage of whatever you bring as business. So I'm interested in doing that right now. That's and what's a day in the life look like doing that? Of a business developer, you go to conferences. You meet companies, you try to figure out what they're doing in the space and what they need to get to the next level of revenue. And then I look through all of the people that I know and I find that person and I connect them and I make a percentage off of that. I see. And what qualities does someone need to have to excel? At this job, I think you have to like people a lot. You have to like genuinely be interested in the space and trying to figure out what each protocol does and like what each company is trying to do and have a strategic mindset, I think. I'm a... I'm very like, I look at you and I'm like, you're trying to do this. And I'm like, well, what if you took this route? And like, I'm able to connect. I think it's because I'm an artist. My clients in real estate said that it was because I was an artist that I was able to do that. See like creative solutions. You think like outside the box. Yeah, that's just how my brain operates. And so in a space that's very like technical, it's a, it's a very unique skill to have. My last question for you is what's your favorite thing about what you're doing right now? The art or the business development? Just everything. You're everything. just. It seems like you've been through a lot. You yeah, went through a lot of stages, <laughs> lots of careers. But like, just your favorite thing about your journey thus far? Um, I love learning. Mm -hmm. I love that the moment you learn about a new thing, it creates new opportunities. I like feeling like I'm in control of what I do. Like as an artist, the reason I did real estate to finance my own thing is because I didn't want to wait for a label to find me or to decide to finance me. And I was like, you know what? I can go make that money and then finance my own thing. So the empowerment of like being able to pay for your own shit. <laughs> Just fun. You don't have to, I don't have to ask anybody, oh, can I release this song? Can I do this? Can I travel to this place? It's like, no, I'm in control of my money. And so it's very empowering. Yeah, your approval process is really easy when it's just you. <laughs> Me and me conversation. <laughs> do I want to do this? All right, I do it. I approve. <laughs> Aaron Meckler. And what do you do for a living? Uh, I have an investment banking firm that we have a couple different focuses. We have a fractional CFO support side of our business. We also put deals together in the junior public markets and mid-market private companies. And what does a day in the life look like for you doing all those ventures? So it's, it's, it's different every day. Depends that when transactions are hot, 
I'm more focused on deals and less focused on my CFO side of the practice. When the deal market is slow like it is right now, I'm more focused on building up my service-based uh, fractional CFO support. I maintain about five to seven clients on the CFO side and about two or three ongoing on the transactional side. I see. And how much do you make from all of this? Uh, it depends on the year, uh, ranging somewhere between five hundred to seven hundred thousand dollars. And what steps did you take to get to the position you're at today? Uh, grind. I, I, I'm, I am educated, so... What did you study? You know, just this, all the steps to get to the point you're at. So I, I have a degree in commerce, business, and I also have a... I'm a chartered investment manager and a fellow of the Securities Institute. Uh, outside of that, I have an M&A uh, designation from Columbia University in New York and, uh, you know, worked in corporate finance for real estate, private equity, and different sectors as well as tech and family offices. And that's kind of how I built my broad range of corporate finance. What qualities does someone need to thrive in your industry? Uh, you gotta have high interpersonal skills, strong emotional intelligence. You gotta be willing and able to listen. But at the same time, you need technical abilities as well. So both like IQ, EQ. Yeah, exactly. If you wanna succeed, the real, the real key is you gotta go out and meet people and you gotta hustle your ass. If you're not grinding, you're not making money in my business. Yeah, I agree. Networking in almost any industry is the way to go. Yeah. Unless, you know, you do some, some kinds of law where you can just scam people for a living. But no, I love lawyers, but sometimes it's just too easy for them. What's your favorite thing about what you do? Well, I like to build my own freedom, right? So I worked corporate for years. I worked on Bay Street for five years. And I just felt like I did not have time for my family, for myself. Uh, mental health was low. And so when I went out and ventured on my own, I was able to basically set my own pace, uh, do my own thing, build my own clients. And it's very fulfilling and rewarding uh, that you're really, you know, building deals from scratch, putting them together. So I guess that's basically the main thing. So the freedom. It's the freedom and the, the thrill of taking a deal that's not packaged up, you know, hasn't raised money and it's like zero dollars. They don't know where they're going next, but they got this really cool hit, like hidden gem. So being able to help them get their capital in, get their infrastructure in place so that they can thrive either in the public markets or in privately is really, really fun. Oh, that does sound fulfilling. That's all the questions for me. I really appreciate you taking the time. What does a day in the life look like as a co-founder of a Web3 company? Sometimes I'll be marketing. Sometimes I'll be in my basement coding. Uh, the day in the life is very, very dependent on what's needed at the time. So every day is different. Yeah, exa exactly. Yeah. How much do you make? I make around uh, $100,000 a year. What qualities does someone need to have to excel in your industry? Um, as a co-founder? As a co-founder in Web3. Uh, honestly, I got my degree in computer science, so I was very technical, technically oriented, and that helped me a lot. Uh, so either be technical or be markety, I would say, would uh, allow you to excel. So if you're good at marketing or good at tech, Come, we need you, yeah. Come on, Either be a builder or be in sales and marketing. Exactly. That's great advice. My next question for you is, what steps did you take to fall into being co-founder in the Web3 space? Honestly, I kind of just fell into it. Uh, so we teach people, we're, we're an ed, ed tech platform, and I was already teaching people for free, and I just decided to do it with my co-founder under a company. So I was doing it for free, and then I just did it under a company. Yeah. You just saw a business opportunity and decided to capitalize on it. I was getting like 50 DMs a day and I was like, there's too much demand here. Why am I doing this by myself for free? Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. My last question for you is, what's your favorite thing about what you do? My favorite thing is that it's every day is different, right? And that it's, it doesn't get boring. I'll say it just doesn't get boring. Yeah. That's my favorite thing. David Cormican. And what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a uh, producer, screenwriter, and uh, head of uh, production for Mogul Productions. What's a day in the life look like for you doing that? Uh, there's no no day similar. <laughs> they're they're all so different. Every day is just new challenge. It's like go 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 Monday to Friday. I really try to stay religious about Saturday Sundays being personal time and family time. How much do you make? Wow, you go right from personal time to financial time. Uh, larger than low to mid six figures and uh, yeah. So low to mid six figures. Yeah. And what steps did you take to do what you're doing? Uh, one step every day, honestly. You just have to, instead of looking at the bigger picture, you have to look at what, the, what are the smaller steps that lead you to that and you just keep plugging away. One, you know, it, it might seem like you're 
operating at a snail's pace, but you stop and you look back in a month and you're like, holy crap, I actually accomplished quite a bit. What qualities does someone need to have to excel in your industry? Uh, in the film and television industry, it's perseverance, 100%. You, you know, you're, you're going after multi-millions of dollars to make a, a single film or a TV series, and that just doesn't happen overnight to someone who's brand new to the industry. So you have to be, you have to be there grinding it out, going to the conferences, meeting with all the broadcasters, the financiers, constantly going back to them uh, so that they become familiar and comfortable with you. You know, this industry... You don't, you don't just hand over millions of dollars to someone who's got a great idea. It's like you got to have a great idea plus a track record. And I think that's a, something that a lot of newcomers to the industry don't quite um, anticipate or expect. They think they're going to get their idea going right away. And it's actually that great idea or any sort of overnight success is usually a success story is like 10 years in the making. Yeah, it does sound like there's a lot of relationship maintenance and like networking. Absolutely. Absolutely. You got to nurture those relationships. And my final question for you is what's your favorite thing about what you do? About what I do? Yeah. That every day is so different. Mm. And I kind of get to choose my own adventure. That was like one of the things my parents, they for years, for years, always were asking me like, when are you going to go back to school and get your teaching certificate or some sort of degree to fall back on? I don't have any degrees. I have many diplomas, no degrees. Um, and they finally realized when my alma mater uh, acknowledged me as their distinguished alumnus, they're like, oh, maybe he actually knows what he's doing in this industry. <laughs> so it's just like, yeah, I love what I get. To, I get to play pretend every day of my life and somehow make a, an amazing, incredible life out of it. No, oh, it sounds fun. It yeah. sounds like a great time. Thank you, brother.